Hi, my name's Ken Titmus, and quite often during my DDMLP courses, people ask, how does the DDMLP buffers work when we look across a supply chain through different entities? So I thought I'd put a little supply chain together here. I call it the shampoo supply chain to see how these buffers would operate up the supply chain. So the objective of this webinar is to look at constructing a demand-driven MLP vertically integrated supply chain for a bottle of shampoo from the customer through the retailer, the retailer's distribution center, the bottle filling contract packer, the plastic bottle manufacturer, and the bottle polymer importer. And then after the initial setup, looking for ways to improve the flow. Here's our customer, Happy Harry. He lives, he lives in Friedenburg up the west coast. He buys his toiletries from a pharmacy chain called Super Pharma in the town. He's very brand loyal and uses the pharmacy chain's own brand of regular shampoo. He's very organized and uses a two bin system to manage his stock of shampoo to ensure he never runs out. So Super Pharma is a countrywide operation with over 250 shops in most major towns, and they're open seven days a week. In the Western Cape, they've got 29 shops which are replenished from a large distribution center in Cape Town. Depending on the area, the stores are replenished by truck between once or twice a week. The Friedenberg store is replenished twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. Apart from the distribution center in Cape Town, there are other regional distribution centers in Johannesburg, Durban, Port Elizabeth. Super Pharma has their shampoo products contract packed by Conpac in Johannesburg, who delivers directly to four distribution centers. Conpac is situated in Johannesburg and Contract packs various toiletry products for a number of companies, including Pharma, Super Pharma's product range. For Super Pharma, they pack a range of three shampoos and two conditioners. All these products use the same plastic bottle with a different print. They buy the printed bottles from PB Manufacturing, who is also in Johannesburg. So PB Manufacturing produce undecorated standard and printed custom blow molded bottles for various industries, including compact for the Super Pharma range of products. The same custom bottle is used for the Super Pharma branded range of three shampoos and the two conditioners and then printed for the five different products. The standard plastic polymer to mold these bottles is bought from Poly Imports. Poly Imports are agents for various polymers used in the plastics industry. The polymer they import for the Super Pharma bottle is a standard product from China and comes in one ton bulk bags as, 25, as well as 25 kilo bags. They warehouse their products in the port of Durban and distribute by road to their customers, including PB Manufacturing in Johannesburg. So if we look at the Super Pharma shampoo supply chain, we have our customers on the right hand side here is Happy Harry, who buy their products from the Super Pharma Friedenberg store. This store is replenished from the Super Pharma Cape Town distribution center, which also distributes products to 28 other Western Cape stores. Super Pharma uh, DC get their products from Conpac. Conpac also deliver finished product to the DCs in Joburg, PE, Durban, as well as Cape Town. Conpac buys the plastic bottles from PB Manufacturing, and PB Manufacturing buys the polymer for the bottles from Poly Imports. 
So let's have a look at setting up a demand-driven MLP supply chain for Superfarmers Shampoo. Before we do that, we need to just have a little recap on how we construct a DDMLP buffer. First thing we need to have is a range of buffer profiles. And these are usually broken down into different types of product, purchasing, manufacturing, distributed, intermediate items or mixes maybe. We then generally break them down into short, medium or long lead time categories. And within each of these lead time categories, we would have a variability category, either low, medium or high. So when calculating a buffer, we generally start with the yellow zone first as it's the easiest one to calculate. And it's the heart of the demand coverage in the buffer. And it's always the average daily usage multiplied by the, the appropriate lead time. Once we've calculated the yellow zone, we can then calculate the green zone. And we do this in one of three ways. It's either a significant minimum order quantity or it could be based on a desired or imposed order cycle. In other words, we want to replenish the stock every so many days or weeks, or we want to manufacture it so many days, every so many days or every, uh, so many weeks. Or we want to calculate it using the lead time factor where we take the size of the yellow zone and we multiply it by the lead time factor. Whichever any one of these three numbers comes out to be the biggest, we will use that as the green zone. The red zone is broken down into two. We have the red zone base and we have the red zone safety. We calculate the red zone base first. And it's the same as taking the yellow zone and multiplying it by the lead time factor. So we've got the lead time factor times the average daily usage times the appropriate lead time. Once we have that number, we can then multiply it by the variability factor to get the red zone safety. And then we add the two numbers together, the red zone base and the red zone safety to get the total red zone. So here's an example part we have here. It's part number one, two, three. Its average daily usage is 20. It has a buffer profile of MML, so it's a manufactured item with a medium lead time and a low variability. And we've given the, uh, the medium uh, lead time a factor of 0.5 and the low variability a factor of 0.25. There is a minimum order quantity of 200. And there is an imposed order cycle of seven days. And the decoupled lead time for this manufactured item is 14 days. So we've got an average daily usage of 20 per day, decoupled lead time of 14 days. We're in a medium lead time category, so we're going to use 50%. We've got a desired order cycle of seven days, a minimum order quantity of 200, a variability category, which is low. And so we're going to use a 0.25 variability factor. So if you remember, we calculate the yellow zone first. This is the heart of the demand coverage in the buffer. And it is always calculated as 100% of the average daily usage times the lead time. So in this particular example, we have an average daily usage of 20 and a lead time of 14. Multiplying those two together, we get a figure of 280. So our yellow zone in this example is 280. Now we come to calculate the green zone. Now we know there's an order cycle of seven days. And if we want to work out what the, the green zone size for an order cycle of seven days, we multiply seven days by the ADU of 20, which gives us a number of 140. Let's calculate the green zone using the lead time factor. So we take the average daily usage and we multiply it by the lead time and then the lead time factor and in fact, we get the same number, 140. This is purely a coincidence in this particular example. But we know there is a minimum order quantity of 200. So 200 is larger than 
either of these 140s. So the green zone is going to be, in this example, 200. Now we need to calculate the red zone. Okay, as we said, we do it in two parts. We calculate the red zone base, then we calculate the red zone safety, and then we add the two together to get the red zone size. So the red zone base is going to be the ADU 20 times the lead time 14 times that lead time factor of 0.5. So it's at 140. And now take that 140 and I'll multiply it by the variability factor, which is 0.25, which gives me a number of 35. So if I add 140 and 35 together, I get a red zone of 175. So if we look at the buffer for this part, number 123, We've got a red zone of 175, a yellow zone of 280, and a green zone of 200. And in DDMOP speak, we talk about top of. So top of red is 175. Top of yellow is going to be 175 plus 280, which is 455. And then top of green, which is top of yellow plus the 200, giving us 655. So as a quick summary, uh, the yellow zone is then 100% of the lead time times the average daily usage. The green zone can be calculated either with an order cycle, a lead time factor, or a minimum order quantity. The red zone is made up of two parts, the red zone base, which is based on the lead time factor, and the variability factor will affect the red zone safety, and we add the two together for the total red zone. Okay, so let's start with the customer, Happy Harry. Harry has determined that a bottle of regular Super Pharma shampoo lasts him between four to five weeks. He goes to the Super Pharma store between once and twice a month to replenish his toiletries and pharmaceuticals. He uses a two bin system to manage his shampoo. So when one bottle is used up, he starts on the second and puts a shampoo on his shopping list for the next shopping trip. So what about the regular shampoo stock management at Super Pharma's Friedenberg store? The store in Friedenberg has analyzed the sales data for their regular shampoo over the last 90 days and have concluded that they sell, on average, 7.65 bottles per day. They receive deliveries from the Cape Town Distribution Center on Mondays and Thursdays on the DC's Milk Run up the west coast. The shampoo is packed in cartons of 24 units. So what about the regular shampoo buffer at the store? We know the ADU is 7.65, that's based on the last 90 days of sales. We reckon it's a fairly short lead time, so we're going to use a 0.75 lead time factor. There's also fairly low variability on this particular item, so we're going to use a 0.25 variability factor. The lead time is between three to four days, so in worst case scenario, we're going to use four days for the lead time. And the minimum order quantity for shampoo is 24, as we get 24 bottles in a carton. So the yellow zone is going to be 7.65, that's the ADU, times the lead time of four days, which gives us 30.6, or 31 units. The green zone, uh, if we calculate it using the lead time factor, it's 30.6 times 0.75, which gives us a 22.95 units. So I think we need to round it up to an, the MOQ of 24. The red zone base is going to be the same as the green zone calculated with the lead time factor. So that's 22.95, or let's call it 23. And the red zone safety is going to be 22.95 times the variability factor, which is 0.25, which gives us 5.74. So let's call it 6. So if we take the red zone total, it's going to be 23 plus 6, which is 29. Our average inventory is going to be the red zone plus half the green zone. 
So that's the red zone's 29 and the green zone's 24. So that's going to be 29 plus 12 is 41. That's going to be our average inventory in the buffer. And the average order frequency is the uh, green zone divided by the ADU, which gives us three plus days or close to four days. So if we look at the buffer, we've got a 29 red zone, we've got a 31 yellow zone, we've got a 24 green zone. So top of red is 29, top of yellow is 60, and top of green is 84. So what about the regular shampoo stock management at Super Farmers Cape Town Distribution Center? So the Cape Town Distribution Center has analyzed the distribution data for the regular shampoo over the last 90 days for all 29 stores and has concluded that they ship on average 285.4 bottles per day. They receive deliveries from Compaq with a three week delivery lead time. And the MOQ uh, for this particular shampoo being manufactured is 5,000 bottles. The shampoo is packed in cartons of 24 units. So if we look at the regular shampoo buffer at the Cape Town Distribution Center, We've got an ADU of 285.4 based on the last 90 days of sales. We've got a lead time factor, let's call it a medium lead time. So we'll use a factor of 0.5. Also, the variability is fairly low on this product again. So we'll use a 0.25 variability factor. The lead time is 21 days. And when we order from Compaq, the minimum order is 5,000 units. So the yellow zone is going to be 285.4 times the lead time of 21 days, which is, gives us 5,993.4 units. The green zone then is going to be that 5,993.4 times 0.5, which gives us 2,996.7. But because the MOQ is 5,000 units, we'll make the green zone 5,000. The red zone base is going to be the same as the green zone calculated with the lead time factor. So that is 2,990, let's call it 7. The red zone safety is going to be the red zone base multiplied by the variability factor of 0.25, which gives us a number of 749. So the red zone total is going to be 2,997 plus 749, which gives us a total of 3,746. Average order frequency is going to be the green zone divided by the ADU, which is every 17 plus days. And average inventory is going to be the red zone plus half the green zone which is going to be in the order of 6,246 bottles of shampoo. So if we look at the buffer, the red zone is going to be 3,746, the yellow zone 5,994, and the green zone 5,000. So top of red is 3,746, top of yellow is 9,740, and top of green is 14,740 units. Now, what about Super Farmers printed regular shampoo bottle stock at Compaq itself? So Compaq orders the make to order printed shampoo and conditioner bottles from PB Manufacturing. For the regular shampoo shipped to all four DCs, the ADU has been calculated at 958.5 over the last 90 days. They receive deliveries from PB Manufacturing with a three week delivery lead time. The make to order MOQ is 5,000 bottles per shampoo or conditioner variant. The bottles. So let's have a look at the bottle buffer at Compaq. The average daily usage is 958 based on the last 90 days of usage. 
it's a medium lead time so again let's use a lead time factor of 0.5 and again we'll use a variability factor of 0.25 the lead time is 21 days and the MOQ is 5,000 units. So the yellow zone is going to be the ADU multiplied by the lead time, which gives us a figure of around 20,129. The green zone is going to be 20,129 multiplied by the lead time factor of 0.5, which gives us about 10,065. The red zone base is going to be the same as the green zone based on the lead time factor, which is 10,065. And the red zone safety is going to be that 10,065 multiplied by 0.25, which gives us 2,516. So total red zone is going to be 10,065 plus 2,516, giving us 12,000. 581. So the average inventory is going to be the red zone plus half the green zone, which comes out at 17,614. Uh, and the average order frequency is going to be the green zone divided by the average daily usage, which gives us approximately every 10 days. So if we look at the buffer, the red zone is going to be 12,581. The yellow zone is going to be 20,129. The green zone is 10,065. And the top of red is 12,581. Top of yellow is 32,710. And the top of green is going to be 42,775. So what about Superfarmer's bottle polymer stock at PB Manufacturing? So PB Manufacturing blows and prints bottle, bottles on a make-to-order basis for compact. They are blowing and printing on average about 5,000 bottles per day. And each bottle weighs about 42 grams. This polymer is only used for the Superfarmer bottles. They receive deliveries of the polymer from poly imports in Durban once a week. The MOQ is 1000 kilos in a bulk bag. So let's have a look at the polymer buffer at PB Manufacturing. We know the average daily usage is, we said, 5000 bottles times 42 grams, which is about 210 kilos per day based on the last 90 days usage. A uh, fairly long lead time, so we'll give it a 0.75 lead time factor. And again, variability is fairly low, so we'll use it 0.25 again. And the lead time is seven days. Uh, the MOQ is 1,000 kilograms in bulk bags. So the yellow zone is going to be that 210 kilograms times seven, which is 1,470 kilograms. The green zone is going to be 1,470 multiplied by the lead time factor of 0.75, which gives us 1,102.5. So let's call it uh, the MOQ of 1,000. The red zone base is that 1,103. And the red zone safety is going to be the 1103 times the variability factor, giving us a number of 276 kilos. So if we add those two together, we get a red zone total of 1379 kilos. The average inventory is going to be the green zone, sorry, the red zone multi, uh, plus half the green zone. So it's 1379 plus 500 gives us 1879. The average frequency of ordering is going to be that 1000 divided by the ADU of 210, which gives us plus or minus every five days. So when I look at the buffer for the polymer at BP Manufacturing, we've got a red zone of 1379. We've got a yellow zone of 1470 and a green zone of 1000. 
So top of red is 1379, top of yellow is 2849, and the top of green is 3849. What about the polymer stock at polymer imports? Polymer Imports buys the polymer for the, from the Far East in 20 ton containers. They have a few customers that take this grade of polymer. On, on average, they sell 2.3 tons per day. The delivery lead time from order is three months or 90 days. So the polymer buffer at polymer imports is going to be an average daily usage of 2.3 tons. The lead time factor, it's a very long lead time, so we're going to use a lead time factor of 0.25. And there's quite a bit of variability on the lead time and the usage of this polymer. So we're going to call the variability factor 0.75 in this case. The lead time is 90 days and the MOQ is a 20 ton container. So the yellow zone is going to be 2.3 times the lead time of 90, which is 207. The green zone is going to be 207 times 0.25, which is about 52 tons. So let's make that 60 tons, which will make up three containers. And then the red zone base is going to be that 51 or 52 tons. Multiply that by the safety uh, factor of variability factor of 0.75, and we get about 39 tons. So the total red zone is going to be 52 plus 39 tons, giving us 91 tons. So average inventory is going to be the red zone, 91, plus half the green zone, giving us a total of 121 tons average inventory. An average order frequency is going to be the 60 ton green zone divided by the average daily usage of 2.3, which says we'll be reordering this on average every 26 days. So if we look at the um, buffer for the polymer imports, the red zone is going to be 91 tons, the, the yellow zone is going to be 207 tons, and the green zone is going to be 60 tons. So top of red is 91, top of yellow is 298, and the top of green is going to be 358. So looking at the super pharma supply chain, we have hundreds of customers buying from the super pharma Friedenberg store. We've got a shampoo buffer there. And there's a four day lead time uh, to get replenishment from the Super Pharma Distribution Center. Okay, and that takes 21 days to get, get their product from Compaq. Compaq take 21 days to get their bottles from PB Manufacturing. And PB Manufacturing takes seven days to get their polymer from Poly Imports. So if we look at the total local cumulative lead time, it adds up to 53 days. OK, so let's have a look at a couple of ways in which we might improve the supply chain by increasing the flow of materials through this particular supply chain. So the current local cumulative lead time we said was 53 days. So how can we increase the flow and reduce this lead time? Well, there's a couple of things we can perhaps do. What about treating the bottle at PB Manufacturing as a standard bottle as opposed to a make-to-order bottle and keep a buffer of stock? This will reduce the lead time to compact, uh, compact by 14 days. Uh, bottle stock at Compact will be reduced in this case. At Compaq, keeping a stock of filled product, this will reduce the lead time to the Super Pharma DCs by 14 days as well. They also have found a way to reduce the setup time on their printer, so now the MOQ can be 2,500 instead of 5,000. So let's have a look at setting up that printed bottle buffer at PB Manufacturing. 
So we've got the ADU of 958. Um, it's going to be a short lead time now. So we're going to make it 0.75 lead time factor. And also we'll keep the variability low at 0.25. But the lead time is going to be seven days. And the MOQ, we've managed to get down to two and a half uh, thousand units. So the yellow zone then is going to be the 958 times seven, which gives us about 6,710. The green zone um, is going to be that 6,709 times the three quarters there, 0.75, which gives us a figure of around 5,032. The red zone is going to be the 6,709 times the 0.75 again, which gives us that 5,032 for the red zone base. And the red zone safety is going to be the red zone base multiplied by the variability factor of 0.25, which gives us 1,258. So total red zone is going to be 6,290. Average inventory is going to be the red zone plus half the green zone, which is going to be 8,806. And average order frequency is going to be the green zone divided by the ADU, which gives us plus or minus five days. So the red zone is 6,290, the yellow zone is 6,710, and the green zone is going to be 5,032, which gives us top of red at 6,290. Uh, top of yellow at 13,000, and top of green at 18,032. So let's have a look at the printed bottle stock um, at Compaq, where it's going to be reduced from what we had before. So the details are going to be exactly the same as the bottle buffer at PP Manufacturing. So the numbers are going to be exactly the same. So the yellow zone will be the same size, the green zone, the red zone base and safety will be the same size. And so the average inventory and the order frequency will be the same as well. So the red zone 6290, yellow zone 6710, the green zone is 5032, top of red 6290 top of yellow 13,000 and the top of green 18,032. Now we need to look at the regular shampoo buffer at Compaq. Remember, this was a make to order product. We've said, well, why don't we make it a standard product and keep a stock of shampoo actually at Compaq. So the ADU, we've got an ADU of 285. That's based on the last 90 days sales. Uh, the lead time is going to be a lot shorter now, so I'm going to make that 0.75. We'll keep the variability factor at 0.25. We'll make the lead time is now seven days, and of course, we'll reduce that MOQ to two and a half thousand. So the yellow zone is going to be the ADU times the lead time, which gives us about 1998. The green zone is going to be 1998 times 0.75 which gives us around 1,498 or nine. So we'll use the two and a half thousand, which is the MOQ at this point. So the red zone base uh, is gonna be that uh, 1,499. The red zone safety will be 1,499 times 0.25, which gives us about 375. So the total red zone is gonna be 1,874. The average inventory will be the uh, ADU, sorry, the MOQ, which is two and a half thousand, half of the MOQ plus the red zone at 1874, which gives us a, an average inventory of 3,124. Order frequency or average order frequency will be the green zone multiplied by the ADU, which gives us plus minus eight days. So the buffer of regular shampoo at Compaq then is going to be red zone 1874, yellow zone 1998, green zone two and a half thousand with top of red at 1874, top of yellow at 3872, and top of green at 6372. Now, what about the reduced regular shampoo stock at the Cape Town 
distribution center because uh, we're now getting the shampoo a lot quicker. It's a make to order, uh, to make to stock, sorry, from the from Compaq as opposed to make to order. The lead time is going to be reduced so we can reduce the buffer of shampoo at the Cape Town distribution center. So we know the ADU is 285. Uh, we'll keep the, the lead time factor because it's a short lead time now at 0.75. We'll keep the variability factor at 0.25, the lead time seven days, and the MOQ is at two and a half thousand units. So yellow zone is going to be 285 times seven, which gives us about 1998. Green zone is going to be that 1998 times 0.75, which gives us 1495, which is a bit less than the MOQ. So we'll make the green zone the MOQ of 2500. Red zone base is going to be the 1997 times 0.75, which gives us around 14.99. And the safety is going to be 14.99 times 0.25, which gives us about 375. So total red zone is going to be about 1874. That gives us an average inventory of red zone plus half the green of 3,124 and an average order frequency around about eight days. So the reduced regular shampoo buffer stock at the Cape Town distribution center, we're gonna have a red zone of 1874, yellow zone of 1998, green zone of 2,500, which gives us top of red at 1,874, top of yellow at 3,872, and top of green at 6,372. So if we look at the improved supply chain now, we've got stock of shampoo sitting at Superfarmers Friedenberg store, which is being supplied from Superfarmers Western Cape Distribution Center, where there is a stock of shampoo. We now have a stock of packed shampoo sitting at Compaq, as well as printed bottles stock at Compaq. Uh, in addition, at uh, PV Manufacturing, we don't only have a stock of or a buffer of polymer, but we've also set up a buffer for the printed bottles. So we now look at the total cumulative lead time has been reduced to 39 days. So what a summary of the improvements. By halving the batch size from 5,000 to 2,500, we've gained a better flow. And by stocked printing bottles at PV manufacturing, we've reduced the lead time to compact by seven, uh, down to seven days. And by stocking finished product at compact, we reduce the lead time to the distribution centers down to seven days as well. So total reduction in lead time is from 53 days down to 39 days. So we've reduced the whole supply chain by 27% in lead time. We've also got a reduction of finished product average inventory at the Cape Town distribution center. We average inventory was 6,246. Uh, sorry, yeah, and it's now gone down to 3,124. So that's a 50% reduction in that uh, uh, stock sitting at the Cape Town DC. But we've also reduced the bottle stock at Compaq as well from 17,614 average inventory down to about 8,806, which again is another 50% reduction in inventory. If you want to learn more and see how this might work for your supply chains, then I suggest you contact the Demand Driven Institute at demanddriveninstitute.com. You'll find a lot of information on this particular website about the DDMOP methodology, lots of papers, lots of videos, uh, lots of case studies. And in addition, if you want to know more, you can contact us at Demand Driven Africa at demanddriven.co.za or you can contact me ken titmus at plus 27 83 700 4354 or on ktitmus at mweb.co.za